An artist just sold a JPEG file for $69 million. What's up guys, Nuno here. A 3D artist called Beeple just sold his artwork called The First 5000 Days for $69 million at an auction at Christie's. For those who don't know who Beeple is, he's an artist that spent the last 13 years creating digital artwork every single day. And now he collected his first 5000 days of work, merged them all together into just one single piece and sold it for $69 million. <laughs> That's right, $69 million. There are a lot of artists selling their digital art for thousands of dollars and all of this is possible now due to NFTs. So NFT stands for Non-Fungible Tokens. This means it's unique, there's nothing alike, it cannot be replaced. These are unique digital assets. It can be JPEGs, video clips or even music. Each NFT can be bought and sold just like physical assets, but the blockchain allows for ownership and validity of each of these digital assets to be tracked. Well, you're probably thinking, this is ridiculous because you can easily just save a high resolution image of the artwork and print the artwork yourself that you can download from the internet. Yes, that's true, but if you think about it, it's no different than a physical painting from Van Gogh or any other famous artist. You can always print the same painting from the internet, there's already tons of copies of it, and hang it on your living room. But you don't own that painting, the ownership belongs to someone else. And here it's the same, what matters is the ownership of the digital item that you are buying. But the original painting by Van Gogh will always remain just one and can have only one single owner at a time. And over time, the price of these masterpieces increases while they are sold from one owner to another. The same happens with NFTs. You have many sites where you can apply to sell your NFTs, like Super Rare, Rarible, Maker's Place, OpenSea, and many more. I currently have two digital artworks for sale on OpenSea, so I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check them out. So with this short explanation out of the way, I want to show you how you can create a conceptual artwork in Lumion that can be sold as an NFT. So let's get started. So let me start by giving a shout out to this artist, it's called Mustafa Khalid and he has a lot of very conceptual artworks, very abstract and with a lot of these type of shapes and it was really an inspiration for me to make similar artwork. So now let me show you, I have here in my modeling software I created a very simple terrain like this. I just pushed some of the geometry and created a very basic uh, terrain. Then I added another one, just a plane that will work as the water. So I wanted to have some water puddles here and there. And the final one is this uh, light. So it's basically a cylinder that I just uh, extruded and it looks like this. So as you can see, all of this is quite basic to model. You can do this in any uh, 3D software. I'm using here Modo, but you can do this in 3ds Max, SketchUp, whatever. Whatever you're using, you probably can do this. And then I imported this model to Lumion. As you can see here, it's a, the imported model. And as for the light, I just gave it a material with emissive lighting. So I gave a, a slight color that I want, like this purple color. And then here on the settings, you have emissive, so for this one, I put it at about five and that's it. They don't have, it doesn't have anything else on, on this. And as for this uh, terrain, I added um, leaves material. Instead of making grass, I decided to go with the leaves. So you can always use leaves for the floor as well. If you have a ground and you want to have the, that very thick ve vegetation, so you can always use this. So for example, if you choose a different one, so you have a lot of options here that you can select and you can see what fits best. And when you look from a little bit of distance, you can see it looks quite nice. So I selected this one and then I adjusted the parameters here, like the spread. So how much do you want this lips to spread? The leaf size, so smaller or bigger. The leaf type, so here you can also change the leaf type again and this pattern, so you can always select a better pattern for the camera angle that you are rendering, okay? So I'm gonna click cancel. And for this one here, the water, I just selected a muddy water from Lumion. 
Okay, again, you can check here the parameters and uh, increase the wave height, more caustics, less caustics, all of these parameters you can adjust. So let me go back. Uh, by the way, about the terrain, if you'd like to know how to create a realistic terrain in Lumion, I have a video for that and I'll leave a link in the top right corner and also in the description below this video. Then another thing I did, I started adding a lot of elements like the trees, some rock assets, some mega scan assets as well, and some effects. And all of this, what I recommend to do is to add in a separate layer because it's, it was a, a lot of objects and even for my computer, I have a 3080 and it starts to get a little bit laggy, a little bit slow, because if you check here, I have about 90 frames per second, but after I add all of that, you will see that the frames drop drastically. So it's all something that you have to take into account, the scene optimization. So let's start here by trees one. So these uh, layers, you can just uh, uh, click it and uh, you can rename it to whatever you like. So I name it trees one. And so these trees one are this fine detail nature and this specific type of tree. One thing, by the way, to note is that for this scene, this is a more dark and moody scene. I edited like this in the darkness, like this. But uh, since I wanted first to show all the assets, I'm showing you as daytime now. But we'll go later into nighttime and the lighting and all the effects as well. So now let's go back here. And trees number two. So again, another type of trees. And by the way, if I go here, you notice that I already have 33 frames. <laughs> so these are very, very heavy trees. So if you are using this type of trees and a lot of them, just pay attention because they are really heavy. And by the way, why are these trees so heavy? Because right now I have here on my settings, high quality trees. So in editor, this is in editor, the high quality trees. So if I uncheck this and go back, now, all of a sudden, I have almost 50 frames per second. So it's a huge increase. So now, let me unhide this one, trees one, trees three, I mean. And uh, with this one, you can see also another asset here. Let me go back here. These assets are from the plants library of the fine detail nature as well. So they are quite heavy as well. But since I wanted this specific shot, just this, uh, this area here, Okay, I wanted to, to look with the best quality assets. So, and I know that my computer could handle it, so it was okay. And uh, unhide this one and uh, these background trees. So these background trees is basically the, the ones that you can find here on nature. And you can go here to clusters. And here all of these clusters are basically background trees that you can place and they are basically just one uh, one plane with a texture or several textures of the trees and when you look at the distance this is very good to to cover that horizon horizon line so you don't want to show the horizon line because that's usually what can tell immediately that is a 3d render when you have that never ending grass so pay, pay attention to that now let's unhide ground assets so this one I use, uh, this is a dark scene and you cannot see a lot of the details. I use a lot of the rocks that are already included in the Lumen library. Even though if you wanted to a more lit scene where you see very uh, close these assets, I wouldn't recommend using these ones because they are not uh, with the highest resolution and with the highest resolution tex textures as well. But I also add here for this, uh, for this slope where I want the person to be. I added here a mega scan asset as well, and uh, in here as well. I added as well some of these tree trunks here on the floor. So I just scattered a little bit of these assets for the scene. Let me unhide this one first. It's effects. So this effects it's basically fog and smoke. So I put here fog on the on the on the floor, and here I put some leaves as well. These leaves are just changed color to um, so these leaves doesn't interact so much with the overall co color of the scene. So I just desaturated the color of the leaves. Actually, we can we can have a look at them. If you go here to the effects and click here, so you see that the color is a very desaturated brownish color. And then you can adjust the the wind and the wind Z and wind X and uh, and here I have the smoke, 
as well. So smoke is just coming through this area here. And lastly, I had one of these uh, people and uh, animals that we have here on the, this category. And then we have people 3D static. So these are the new ones that came with the Lumin 11. And these ones are with a higher quality than the other ones. So that's why I use these ones. And I use this one. Okay. And just uh, rotated it like this. So I figured for this scene, this one actually looks pretty cool. So let me erase this one. And you can always change the color if you want of the dress. But I think that for this scene, again, the, the white, it's nice here. Okay, and now let's go over to the lighting. So first we need to decrease the sun height. So let's place this to a dark scene now, to a night time, I mean. And let's go over to lights. And I have a couple of lights here. So the main light here is probably this one. It's an Omni light. And actually, when I first made this scene, I was with Lumin 11. Omni lights didn't add shadows, but now they do cast shadows. But still, I'm going to leave it at medium, the shadows, because I'm very far away. So I think I'll not need such a high resolution shadows. And as you can see, I have the default color and I have a brightness about almost at the middle, the brightness. And that's pretty much it. This one is more to give a little bit of light of all of this structure here. Then I have here another one that is just pointing from this top here to the, to the girl here. And this one is basically to simulate all the light that comes from this structure to here. And why I place it here and not here inside this structure, because I want to just focus the light on this area and not the whole scene. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of these tricks with lighting that it's not actually realistic, but at the same time, it makes it feel more realistic. So you have to do some light tricks. For example, this one here, this light here, I place it from the back so I can illuminate a little bit of the back as well. So if I remove this light, see, the girl is too dark. If I increase, I can have a little bit of highlights here from, of the dress. Okay. So again, this is just some light tricks that you can use in your scenes. And not just for this type of scenes, you can use this everywhere in an interior set, exterior, all of this works. And sometimes you really have to kind of fake the lighting with these artificial lighting tricks. The next thing we'll see is the render effects. And render effects, we can go here to photo on this uh, icon on the bottom. And let me double click. So I set up my camera like this. I'm uh, using 25 millimeter lens and uh, about 170 eye level. One thing to note here is that I just placed these trees after I set up my shot like this. I know that this was the perfect place for my camera. And so after that, I went and manually like this, I went here, build it with effects and I placed these trees here on this area because I knew already this was the camera shot that I wanted. So I just start building these uh, trees and all of these vegetation assets in this area. Okay. So I built part of the scene already in this build with effects. So I know exactly where to place the assets, where they will look good. So we can click here. Okay. Now let's go effect by effect. I have a real sky effect. So I'm using a very dark sky. Actually, this sky is one from Lumin 11, but uh, on Lumin 10, I think you have these three skies or Lumin 9. And you can use any of these. They are equally as good. But since this one is really dark, I selected this one. I think it fits best for this scene. The heading is just basically just placing the, the best area for these uh, clouds. And uh, the brightness I decrease because I wanted to have a dark scene and the overall brightness as well. Then two point perspective, it's so you can have the vertical lines uh, straight. Okay. So this, these lines that you can see here, it makes the image look much more pleasant. So I'll just use that image overlay. It's basically, I'm adding this image as you can see here. So if I remove this image is helping me to frame. Okay. So 
because Lumion doesn't allow you to select any other proportion other than this one horizontal. So this here helps you to frame your composition. Okay. And this is basically, in this case, it's a PNG. And on this side, it's black. And here on the middle, it's uh, transparent. Lens flare, it's to, to add a little bit of this on these areas, on the highlights. Okay, it will have a little bit of bloom as well and some flares. Autumn colors, this one I use to give a more uniform colors to all of these uh, trees, because I'm using very different types of trees. So I'm using these uh, autumn colors to give a little bit of this um, cohesion between all of them. Precipitation, I'm using all particles all the way, the speed, then particles quantity and particle size at 0 0.5, so I can make them bigger or smaller and the quantity as well, so decrease or increase if you want more. And then this particles phase, uh, it's if you increase more, it will, the surfaces will be a little bit more wet here on the ground, but i am leave this at 0 0.4, I think it's okay. This fog is very important. It gives a more depth to the scene, okay? And also it creates a more mystical environment to this shot. The bloom, it's uh, the same here for these highlights. Analog color lab. This effect, what is making it's basically the same as you have on Instagram when you have all of these color filters, it's the same. And here, if I remove, you can see that this scene, how it looks. So when I add this back, so I already have here some color styles applied, some color grading. And, uh, and actually here, so you can have just slide for different styles. And then here the amount is how strong you want this effect. Here sharpen, I added about 0 0.4, I think it's more than enough here. And exposure, I actually decrease the exposure. By default it's 0 0.5, since I wanted a darker scene, put it at 0 0.4. Color correction, I just adjusted the temperature, I increased the tint because I wanted the colors more towards the purple. And I increased also the vibrancy of this shot. Saturation decrease a little bit. This makes your darks darker. And uh, that's it for this. Reflection here. I don't have any reflection planes because everything here it's like with the terrain. So I don't have any flat surfaces to, to add this reflection plane. So it wouldn't make sense. Hyperlight. This is a how many times you want the, the light to bounce around. So I put about 35 for this scene. Skylight, I set for the final render to be ultra and the brightness all the way up. And then I just decrease the saturation because if you increase too much, it will be the scene with a lot of blue. So I don't want that. Shadow, this shadow, I increase all the way, then coloring, uh, brightness, I leave it at about here because if I increase too much I'll see all of this and I don't want so that's about here it was fine this omni shadow in this case I left it at about 0 06 because I want these contact shadows to be quite visible back and by the way if you want to know more about this the render settings the lighting the effects everything I do have a Lumion render course that you can sign up for I'll leave a link in the top right corner and in the description below this video. So continuing, chromatic aberrations. I usually leave this very low like this, but for this scene, I'm actually going to increase a little bit more to about, about here. I'm starting to see something and let's go back. And then I had a depth of field effect. And this one, actually I'm going to click here, edit. I'm going to select here the, this person here, okay, and I'm gonna click out of focus. Let me see. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm going back. One final effect I'm going to add is the advanced and print poster in answer. Okay, this one is useful when you are rendering at 4K or 8K, and I'm going to render my final image. And I'm just going to save the specular reflection, these additional outputs, the lighting map, and the material ID map. 
we'll talk about this later in, in uh, when you are in Photoshop. And I'm gonna render it 4K. I'm gonna give it a name. Okay. All right, so it took about seven and a half minutes to render this 4K image with the final image and plus the three different channels. So now let's open this in Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, let's have a look at all of this. We have the main render, and then we have the lighting map, the material ID, and the specular. And what can we do with these maps? So first, one thing I like to do is go here to crop, and I put here on the crop tool, on this, put four by five, which is this proportion, and then I'll press enter, and one more time, and then I click here to apply on this check. Okay, and I can do this to all of them. Okay, okay. Now I like to first add all the maps to the main scene. So I'll press Control A and Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste. Again to the specular, Control A to select everything, then Control C, and then Control V, and the same thing to the material ID. And so now, this occlusion map, it's useful when you want to create some uh, shadows or some extra shadows. For example, you select this to multiply and uh, create a mask by clicking here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna fill this with the, with the black color. You can either press Alt Backspace if you have this color here as the foreground, or you can go here and select Paint Bucket Tool and then just uh, click to paint and it will paint black or if you have the white on the foreground it will paint white okay so for this i want first to be black and now with the brush this brush tool i can with a white color i can start painting the areas that i would like to be darker so imagine all of this area here i would like to be dark or to have more shadows here so you can see that how it started to create more shadow area here so if I disable, so you can see the difference. Actually, I'm going to remove from here, the top, and just leave it there. So you can create some more contrast in some areas. So you can see that in this area, it gives you more idea that this stone going down here. So it's really up to you what you want to, to do with this. But as you can see, you can create more shadows in some specific areas. And as for the Actually, I'm going to just to rename this so it's easier. So this is the lighting map. And uh, this one is the specular map. And this one is material, material ID. So this specular map, you can put this as a screen. And you can do the same thing. We can apply a mask, fill it with black and uh, now you can either with the same brush just pass on some areas to give uh, more the highlights on specific areas okay like this so if i disable you see that this area is now a little bit more lit you can even increase just a little bit more and increase here on these leaves so so yeah so you get the idea what ma one is to add shadows basically another one is to add a little bit more highlights and this material id so every everything that you have here every texture every material will have a specific material id it's easier to just select one specific thing for example if i would like to have these trees that are in the foreground this and this one actually it's catching those on the back a little bit so we can easily just deselect those just do it very, very roughly like this. And here as well. Okay. And now just uh, click to hide this. And now let's uh, go here in the bottom. We can create. Actually, let me move myself to the left so you can see better. And now, if I click here, now you can see. And. Uh, I'll click here and I'll create uh, levels. And now it's applied just on these trees. It creates a mask just for these trees. So now imagine that I want these trees to be darker because I feel, feel that they are too light. So I can just decrease a little bit. OK. 
okay, before and after. So if you want to edit specific things uh, with the color or the brightness, contrast, anything, you can just use this mask to just select this specific uh, material that you want to, to edit. So now another thing I want to do, I want to just duplicate this and now go here to filter, camera or filter, just want to do some slight adjustments to this image and let, let me see, maybe more like this, exposure, exposure I think it's more the highlights, shadows, a little bit darker, this texture I will increase just a little bit, so if I increase all the way, you can see that it becomes everything super sharp, I just want to add a little bit more, like this, for vibrance, uh, if I decrease, it becomes almost black and white, if I increase, it's too strong, the effect, so I'm gonna leave it at zero, I'm gonna press OK, so here you can see the before and after. So we have a little bit more contrast now. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add a LUT to our scene. And this LUT is a, a file. It contains a specific color grading and each LUT is different. So you can just swipe through these different LUTs and select the one that fits best for your scene, for the mood that you are trying to achieve. You can find some, some of these LUTs online for free. And let me show you one. So I just went to Google and searched for free LUTs and this one was the first one that came up and uh, you can click here download and it will download a zip file and with this zip file you just extract to any folder that you like the files that are inside and then you can go here to this color adjustment and select this one color look up and here load 3D LUTs you can click here and in my case I already uh, placed these LUTs here but you can go here to, again, load 3D LUT. And so I already have here all of these LUTs, so you can simply click any of them and click load. And you see that applies a specific color settings to this uh, scene. And you will all the time have to go here and load 3D LUT and select another one. So it takes a little bit of time. So another thing you can do is to go to the Photoshop folder and go to Program Files, Adobe, then Adobe Photoshop, the current version that you have, presets, 3D LUTs, and place the LUTs here. But pay attention that every time the Photoshop makes a, an update, it will probably de delete the ones that you have here. So I recommend you having the LUTs saved, somewhere else safe, and just copy them here as well, because you might lose the LUTs in this folder as well. Okay, now I can just go here and select any, like this one, and I can just now, with my arrow keys on the keyboard, I just can scroll through them. And this way I can quickly just scroll and see which one I think would be best for my scene. So, let's see. Okay, let's say I, I would like to go with this one. One thing I recommend is not use the LUT to 100% opacity. I always use to about between 20 to 40%. So 40% like this, it's good enough. And then for this scene, actually I forgot to mention, I uh, create a new layer and on this section here, where the light is, with just some uh, brushes like splatter brushes, like, uh, like these ones. Oops, yeah, like this. So I have here a lot of different options. So I don't want this size, I want make them smaller and actually white and now maybe like this so I just add a couple of this here here and there actually even smaller so just to create a more feeling of this magical element and you can make them uh, screen now actually first you can duplicate them by create by pressing ctrl j or drag and drop the layer to this plus and now i will go to blur and gaussian blur and uh, let me see a 
value that looks best okay something like this too and I'm gonna put it as screen okay so before and after this way it makes them look like they are glowing similar to this to this uh, shape here one last thing I would like to do is go here and select with the material ID select the person here and I'm gonna create an adjustment actually with that material ID as you can see it selected this and a lot of different things so I'm just going to deselect all of this I'm just holding alt to deselect all right now I'm gonna to go to color balance and I want to give just a slightly more reddish color here okay so it uh, really pops this to, to your attention and uh, I'm gonna press control and click on the mask this way I'm selecting the mask again and I'm gonna go to curves and I'll make it more a little bit more contrast good and this is all for this scene this is all the post processing i will do for this type of scene so what do you think of nfts are you thinking of selling your artworks let me know in the comments below also if you'd like to learn my secrets to make realistic renders you can sign up for my free training my top 10 secrets to achieve realistic 3d renders i'll leave a link in the top right corner and in the description below this video and i hope you liked this video and if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video